introduction. All right, so um, hello and welcome uh, to the 1240 p.m. Eastern Time SakaiCon session. Uh, my name is Derek Ramsey. I will be moderating this session. It is presented by Wilma Hodges, and this session is Sakai Rubrics. If anyone has any questions during the session, please enter them into the Q&A area. You may also enter questions and comments into the chat. Uh, feel free to enter questions at any time. Um, and uh, Wilma, uh, do you want to address um, as they come up at the end, what's your choice? Yeah, if you can read them off to me if they come in. Uh, okay. Yeah, easy way to break in. Otherwise, we can hold them to the end. All right, sounds good. Um, this session will be recorded as well. It will be available at a later date on the Sakai YouTube channel. If anyone has any problems with their video or audio, uh, please type into the chat box and I'll work with you to get that working. Uh, thank you, and Wilma. All right, great. Well, thank you guys for, for joining the, the Sakai Rubric session. I know we heard a little bit about rubrics already from Amy Dries um, during the showcase. So she um, was able to show you some of the different strategies that she uses for rubrics. I'm going to dive in a little bit more on the how-to part of rubrics, and I'm also going to show you some of the new or upcoming um, features that are available in rubrics. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so just as kind of a recap, um, some of the advantages to using rubrics are that they can really save you a lot of time. Um, because you can build out a very detailed rubric, you have fewer individual comments that you need to type up, which can be a big time saver when you're grading. And it also automatically tallies up the points for you. So you just sort of click through the rubric and it will grab the, the predefined point values. So you really only need to tweak it if you're making an adjustment for a particular student. Um, so that's another big time saver. Um, they can also make your grading more consistent. So if you're grading um, maybe a subjective type of assignment, like an essay or some other type of writing assignment, lend themselves really well to rubrics because um, sometimes it's difficult to assign a, a point value based on an overall you know, paper. But when you break it down into subcategories and specific criteria, it's a little bit easier to see, did they meet this? Did they not meet that? Um, it, you know, is this exceptional? And then have that translate into points. Um, it's also really easy to make grading consistent across faculty. So if maybe you're teaching a course that's um, you know, taught by several faculty at the institution, you could maybe all share a rubric so that you know that you're grading all on the same types of things. Um, that way everybody's kind of using the same structure across the department. Um, Students also get a lot of rich feedback from rubrics. So not only do they get the um, advance notice of what the instructors are gonna be looking for because they can usually see the rubric ahead of time to see, oh, okay, that's what I'm gonna be graded on. Um, but then they also get all that feedback at the end when you've selected um, you know, the, the rankings under each criteria. Uh, and they can see kind of what they missed and where they might need improvement. So it gives them a lot of great feedback. Um, Sakai rubrics can be used in the following tools. So you can attach it to items in assignments. You can attach it to uh, individual quiz questions. So if it's a question that's kind of an open-ended type of question, like an essay, short, short essay um, response or a, um, uh, student uh, file upload question type, or even the um, student audio response where the student is recording an audio response to a question, all of those can have rubrics attached to them so that you can use them to quickly grade those types of um, hand scored question type in the tests and quizzes tool. You can also attach rubrics to the discussions tool. Now that's kind of our, our current and um, sort of legacy discussion tool. I know we, um, we explored the new conversation tools a little bit this morning, and that one is going to eventually replace the discussion tool as it exists now. Um, but the grading aspect is still being built out for conversations. It will eventually um, have the rubric capability. 
that you can attach to. Discussions, you can currently grade using a rubric um, and that functionality will be coming soon uh, for conversations, but it's not quite there yet. Um, and then uh, gradebook items as well. So if you create a gradebook item in the gradebook, you can attach a rubric directly to the gradebook item. And that works great for things that maybe are in-class assignments that you're not really collecting in Sakai or just sort of posting grades in Sakai. So um, you can create a gradebook entry, attach a rubric to it, still use it to grade, but um, you don't actually have to attach it to an item like a quiz or an assignment. Um, so I'm going to step through the process of how you would create a rubric. If you've already used the tool a little bit, a lot of this will be familiar for you. But for those of you who maybe haven't experimented with rubrics, um, you can see how that works. So um, the Manage Rubrics tool shows up over here in the, the left menu. Now, one thing to note is that this tool is visible to instructors. By default, it is not visible to students. So you don't have to make the tool available to students um, to have them see their graded rubric feedback. Um, that's something that they get automatically in um, the tool where it's attached, like in the assignment tool or in the grade book. Um, so the manage rubrics area is really for the instructor to create new rubrics, edit rubrics, um, and share rubrics. So when you go to that uh, tool, you'll see a list of any rubrics that are in the current course. And one thing to note is that uh, rubrics are attached to the course, not the user. So if you go into a course that you're maybe team teaching with someone, um, you might see rubrics created by different people if there's more than one instructor. Like for example, in this site, um, some of them were created by the Sakai administrator and some of them were created by the Sakai instructor. Um, it's only one course, but they both happen to be in there as instructors creating rubrics. Um, so to create a rubric, you would click the add rubric button down here at the bottom, and then it will add a new rubric to the list for the site and you have the opportunity to rename it. Um, so you can type in whatever title you would like and hit save. And then it shows up in the list with the name that you've given it. And you can toggle this um, arrow open to, to see the details and edit the actual criteria. So once you click on that, it will expand out the rubric and you'll see that it has some sample criteria that are in there by default. These are just sort of a starting point. You can use these or delete them, um, whichever you prefer. Um, you can edit what's there simply by clicking on any of the little edit pencils to edit that particular criteria or one of the ratings related to it. And you have an area to put a title as well as um, some descriptive text. So that might be something where you would explain more about what that criteria um, entails, or maybe explain a little bit more about what a meets expectations would, would mean in the context of a particular assignment. So all of that is editable and you can add additional ratings if you want, or you can delete some of them if you don't need as many. Um, so all of that is available as you edit an actual um, rubric. And you also have, and this is a new thing in, in Sakai 22, you have the ability to add a criterion group now. So you'll see, I, I clicked on this button here and it created a new grouping. And this is more of an organizational grouping in the rubric. It's not really a, a scorable item, but it's kind of like a, a section of the rubric. So if you have uh, a few items that are related to a particular, um, topic or, or, or objective that you're looking at, and then you have a separate group, you can kind of split them up visually in the rubric. So in this example, what I did here is I made that, um, that grouping, I called it objectives, and then I made a couple of sample objectives here. So this is learning object one, learning objective two for this particular assignment. So I can actually use this to create sort of a report for myself of how students are performing um, with respect to the learning objectives for a particular item. So this is just one example of how to do that. There's so many different ways you can uh, set up rubrics and you don't have to use objectives or you can use only objectives. Um, so it's totally up to you um, and what works best for your grading scheme.
So here I just modified some of the point values a little bit um, just to show you that you can change all of those things. Um, and now um, I want to show you another thing that is relatively new. This was new in, um, in 21, I believe, might have been new in 22, um, but it's, it's a relatively new feature and that's weighted rubrics. So the ones that I showed you prior were um, by default numeric, they're based on points. So you see all these little hash marks, these are showing that it's a numeric rubric. If you hover over that, you'll see that it gives you the, the tooltip switch to weighted grading. And so if you click on that, it changes to a percentage um, symbol and it gives you a spot here to enter in the, um, the weight for each criteria. So what you wanna keep in mind is the weighting is the total point value for the rubric. So this particular rubric, it works a little differently than the points-based. Points-based ones, you have like some discrete points for each criteria. And like, if this was the top one for that, it would be two plus two plus, you know, whatever. Here it's out of 10, this whole rubric is out of 10. So it's giving me 40% of 10 points. Um, so that's why it sh shows that four in parentheses, because if I were to click this cell, that's how many points would get added to that particular score. Um, so that's just a little bit of a difference in how the weighted rubrics work, as opposed to the point-based ones. Um, we had one so quick question. The other, yeah. Uh, uh, Christina asked, a subheading would be great. She's had instructor to create a criterion with no rating to mimic that functionality. Uh, she was asking, what version is that coming in again? So that is in 22. It's there right now. Okay. So the current release has that. And is weighted rubrics possible within a criterion group? Was asked. Yes. Okay. Now you do have to have the whole rubric as weighted or, or unweighted. So you can't just weight, you know, a group at a time. It has to be the entire rubric is weighted or, or not. But you can have a I, this example doesn't show it, but you can have one that has those objective groups that's weighted. Thank you. All right, so the other cool thing about rubrics is the ability to share them. And in Sakai, it's super easy to share rubrics with other Sakai users on the same system. So um, anytime you have a rubric, there, you can choose to make it public, which, which shares it with all the other instructors at your institution. So um, this little eyeball with the, the slash through it shows that it's private. If you hover over that, you'll see it gives you the option to make it public. So when you click that button, it changes to a little world icon, um, which shows that it's public. The whole world can see it, um, <laughs> at least the world in, in your Sakai instance. Um, and then you have the option to revoke it if you want to stop sharing it and maybe fix it or change it. You can pull it back. It kind of takes it out of that public space um, by simply clicking the little globe and it'll make it private to your particular course again. Um, but when you do share it, it shows up down here at the bottom. If you scroll down, you'll see publicly shared rubrics. And I'll um, show you another screenshot here where I've scrolled down. And this is the essay rubric of, that I had above. It's now a shared rubric on this server. So all the shared rubrics from all the users would show up down here, but you can see like the origin, which is the course that it came from. You can see the author of the rubric. You can see when it was modified. And you also have the option to copy it into your course to use it. So you actually do need to copy it into your site before you can attach it to anything and actually use it for grading. Um, so there's no danger of messing up the shared rubric because you always get your own independent copy once you copy it into your course. Um, but you do have the option to, um, to sort by any of these title headings. If you wanted to sort by modified date or by author, um, there is also a search function now. This is a new thing in 22, I believe, um, the search option. So when you get a lot of rubrics in a site uh, or particularly a lot of shared rubrics on a server, it can get a little difficult to find the one that you're looking for. So um, the search makes this a lot easier. There's a little search bar up at the top. And if you type in a keyword, it could be part of the title, it could be the site uh, or the author. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna 
enter new and it filtered all of the rubrics that I had in my site for a new rubric, which was the only one that met that criteria. So it will update as you type. You don't have to hit enter or anything. And just to, to clear the search, you simply delete the search keyword and it'll go back to the full list. Um, but that's another way to, to quickly find a particular rubric that you're looking for um, in a, a long list that may be available. So, um, so let's take a peek at grading assignments using rubrics. So um, as we mentioned before, you can attach them to an assignment. And, um, and this shows um, an assignment with a rubric attached. So you'll see the research report here has the little rubric icon next to it. That means that it has a rubric attached to it. This second assignment here um, does not have a rubric, so there's no icon. So I can tell at a glance as the instructor whether or not there's a rubric for this particular item. And when I go in to actually grade a rubric, I would just click on grade like I normally would to grade assignments for that particular um, item. And it takes me to the submission list for the students. Um, in this particular one, I've, I've scored a few of them just as an example, but you can, um, you can click on these to preview the rubric the scored rubric or the blank rubric, depending on whether or not it's been graded. And even though in this example, the students didn't actually turn anything in, this was just sort of an empty site, um, you, can, uh, you can go ahead and use the rubric even if there's not a, a file or, or other submission, um, even if it's blank. Um, typically you wouldn't do that, but for this example, uh, I didn't have a bunch of students uploading things. So um, anyway, so you would click on the student that you want to grade that takes you into the greater view for that individual. And so if, if I actually had a student submission, it would show up over here in this um, area of the screen. So the grading pane on the right-hand side is where you would score it. And you'll see this little rubric icon if there's a rubric attached to that particular assignment. So I can click on that to pull up the, the grading rubric and it, it opens it in um, kind of an overlay and you can move this around. Um, this is a still image, so I can't move it here, but, uh, but you can move this around so that you can have it kind of up alongside of the paper that you're scoring if you need to look at them both at the same time. Or if you have two monitors and you wanna drag it over one monitor while you're scoring the paper on the other monitor, sometimes that's really helpful. So in this particular case, these shaded ones were the ones that I chose and I simply went click, click, click to choose those particular um, ratings for each of my objectives. And um, you also, if you choose to enable the um, adjust points option when you set it up um, to attach to that assignment, you can also modify these points. I didn't enable that for this particular one, but, um, but it's an option. And you can also click these little bubbles to add individual comments for a particular student. Um, so you'll see this person got the max points because they got the top rating on all of the criteria. It was out of 80. So the total down here shows up as 80. Um, so something that is new in Sakai 23, now this is not available yet. It's coming in the upcoming release, but it's a very cool feature contributed by University of Dayton. Thank you, Dayton. Um, is the student and criteria summary stats. And you might have seen that teased in the previous slide, but let me show you what that is. When I pulled up the grading rubric here, it showed like the actual rubric filled out, but there's two extra tabs. So the student summary tab gives you a summary of how the students, um, the graded students have scored on this particular rubric. So it will give you kind of the average for each of the criteria that were in there. And also, you have a criteria summary um, that sorts it uh, by criteria instead of by student. So you, if you expand that out, um, you can view the average, median, and standard deviation for each of those items, which can be really useful, particularly if you're um, using rubrics that have uh, learning objectives or course standards as criteria. Um, it gives you some really nice uh, reporting capability. Um, that way. And so you can view that. And this is based on this particular assignment for all of the scored submissions. You do have to have at least one 
scored student submission to get anything to show up in these two um, tabs. So um, you have to use it to grade before the, the report is actually available. Otherwise, it's, um, it's, it doesn't show up. But um, that's how those are coming. Those are coming in 23. So I know folks are, are pretty excited about that. You have a couple of questions coming in. Okay, let me okay. go ahead and take those. Yep, they're in the Q&A section, the first one. Uh, if I am not wrong, I think rubric tool allows the duplicate title of rubrics in Sakai 19 and 20. And will that be changed in Sakai 21 or higher? I'm concerned about the search function for the duplicate title. Uh, I actually don't know. I would have to check on that. But that's an excellent point. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, we'll have to okay, check we'll on take that a look into that one. You. The second one is, can I attach two rubrics to the same assignment? This makes it more valuable as an assessment tool. Yeah. Unfortunately not. Right now the attachment is one to one, so one rubric per item. But that is not the first time that I've heard that request. Um, so I would definitely encourage you to put in a feature request for that. And um, that might be something that could be added later. And one more. When you use a rubric in an assignment and it is locked due to use, can you use it again in another assignment or do you have to use a new copy? You can use the same rubric multiple times um, and it, it doesn't matter if it's locked. The only thing that the lock prevents you from is actually editing the rubric itself. So changing the criteria, changing the, the ratings. You can't change any of that once you've started using it in an assignment. And you probably noticed when I showed the list of rubrics um, in the site that one of them, I think, had a little lock symbol next to it. That means that it's already attached to an item. So I can't make changes to it because I might mess up my grades if I did that. So um, the easy way to, to get around that is just to make a copy of the rubric and then change the copy and attach it to something else if you needed to change the rubric itself. If you wanted to use the same exact rubric for you know, five different discussion posts, you could do that, no problem. All right. Thank you, Wilma. Any more? All right. No problem. So um, there is another new item. This is new in um, 22, I believe, is the print and export function. So you'll notice that there's a little PDF icon next to the title of the rubric. Um, right here, I'm looking at a particular student. Um, so if I export from this screen, it's going to give me the graded rubric for that user um, because I was looking at that user when I selected print. So it, it gives me um, the selected items in the, the list here and also any comments. If I added individual comments for a student, that would also show up here on this um, print view. Now, the other place that you can print rubrics is from the manage rubrics area. And here's that lock icon, by the way, that we were talking about just a moment ago. That shows up once you attach it to something. Um, but you'll also notice the, um, the PDF icons here. You can use these to export it again to PDF um, and it will print a blank version of the rubric for you. So um, if you needed to maybe give this to someone as you know, in you know, hand it to them as a printed thing, um, or if you wanted to share a PDF file of your rubric with somebody who's maybe not in your system, but you wanted to just give them a copy of what you use. Um, you could even, if you're using it for students to have a, a rubric that they use for a peer review, because at least right now, anyway, they can't use Sakai rubrics, you could even export a blank copy of the, the PDF and attach that. So it just makes it a little easier to, to give that um, handed around if you need to. So, um, so that's, that's another new thing that uh, is new in 22. So um, we do have, how many minutes do we have left? Like five? About six like minutes, that? five, six five, minutes. Six minutes. Okay, so we have enough time to try it out just briefly. So let me um, switch into, uh, hopefully it didn't log me out. Okay, so if you have your, um, your sandbox site, what I'd like you to do is go into, you're probably in the Sakai Con site right now, I'm guessing, because you were clicking the links to go to the, this session. Um, so you should see another site up there for your sandbox. If you go over to that site um, and you go into 
the assignment tool, well, actually, let's go to rubrics first. So if you go into rubrics, um, what I'd like you to do is create a rubric. So, it, so you can see how easy it is. Um, so if you go in here and click add rubric, again, it'll give you kind of a sample one and you can change it. Um, you can title it anything you like. I'm not going to make a bunch of changes. I just wanted to have something, you know, with a different title. Um, and you can play with the adding of the criterion group or um, mess, you know, uh, mess with the points a little bit, uh, change any of the language, whatever you like. Note that you can also copy a criteria by clicking copy, or you can delete by clicking the X to remove it. So, um, so that's that's a, a quick way to, to copy or delete individual items here. Um, so once you have at least one rubric in there, now we can go to assignments and I can show you how to attach it to an assignment. So if you go to an assignment, um, and there should be a couple of assignments in here that we preloaded for you just as samples. Um, I'm gonna go to assignment one. Yours might still say draft, mine doesn't because I've already been in here once today. Um, so if I go to edit, you'll see this little you're revising after the open date, just ignore that. Um, so if you scroll down, this is all the different assignment settings that you can choose. So we're not, we're not talking specifically about assignments today. So I'm going to just uh, go straight to the good stuff here. If you keep going to get to the grading section, then you'll see there's a use the following rubric option. And you'll get a list of any rubrics that exist in your course. Um, and if you want to preview a particular one, you can select it here and preview it to make sure it's the right one. Because if you did have some that are named very similarly, or it's just been a while since you looked at it and you don't remember which was which, um, you can preview it real quick to see if that's something that you want to use. And so once you've selected it, you can also um, choose whether or not you want to adjust those individual scores. Um, that's an option. And um, it's this particular assignment's already going to the grade book, so I don't need to make any other changes. I'm just adding a, a, a rubric to an existing um, grade book item. So I'm going to go ahead and post. Hopefully you guys are following along in your sandbox. Um, and then what I'd like to do is go in and let you guys grade um, using the rubric. So again, we don't have any student submissions, but you do have some demo students in here. So if you go to the, the item that you just attached a rubric to and click grade, then you should see these five demo users, um, none of which have submissions, but that's okay. We'll pretend that they do. And if you click on the first one, you'll see that the grading screen comes up for that user. And there's a little rubric icon over here and we're gonna click on it. And then you can choose whatever criteria you think makes sense. Um, and if I wanted to adjust any of that, I could do that, or I could even um, put some additional comments in there. And it totals up my points and everything. And so now I'm going to hit done and then um, save and release to the student. So I've successfully saved my grade and now that's available to the student. Um, so hopefully you guys got a chance to test that out while I was doing it and um, we're almost out of time. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop here. And um, if there are any questions, please yep. let uh, me know. Yep, we have a couple questions. Uh, one, mm -hmm. can you attach a rubric to an assignment after students have submitted? I believe you can. Yes. Yep. I believe as well. Mm -hmm. um, and another question, does max points in grading for an assignment and max total of a rubric have to be equal? They don't, but it's easier if you set them up so that they match. Um, because otherwise you'll go through and click through your rubric and your total points that it added up for you automatically might not match the total points for the assignment. So, um, so that's something you probably want to check if you're using a point-based um, rubric to make sure that it matches your total points for the assignment. Okay. All 
All right. I think that is it. Okay. Well, thank you thank guys. You. And um, I believe we have trivia up next in about 10 minutes. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So I'll see you guys at trivia. Thank you, Wilma.